Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Earth Science screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. Last time we left off, we were talking about minerals, the different uses they may have, and some properties of minerals such as color and streak. Now we're going to be looking at the Mohs hardness scale, or how hard or how resistant they are to being scratched. As you can see from the left-hand diagram here, the hardness scale goes from 1 to 10, which is the hardest these are the softest so as your number is lower the softer the mineral is and it's easier to scratch you can see on the right hand side just a number of different minerals and where they lie on that hardness scale minerals hardness will be determined to the arrangement of the molecules inside a loose arrangement of molecules will make it a softer material so you can see here that they're very spaced apart those or this mineral will be able to get scratched quite easily versus a mineral where the internal arrangement of atoms or molecules inside are extremely packed together. This one will end up being more resistant to being scratched. The hardness scale is on in the second column of our page 16 of our earth science reference table. And you can see how the numbers will vary as we go through something that's metallic versus non-metallic, but none of them on here are gonna be greater than 10. Here's minerals that are classified based on the hardness. Now, when we do the most hardness scale, something like talc with a hardness of one can be scratched by any of these other minerals on here. Or for instance, an iron nail or a copper penny can scratch something with a hardness of one. As we go through, and we look at the iron nail, it's got a hardness of 5.5. So if we try to scratch feldspar, it's not going to do it. But if we take the feldspar and try to scratch the iron nail, it will scratch the iron nail. So this is how we are able to identify the hardness of a mineral based on common objects, such as an iron nail or penny or your fingernail, to, to kind of get an approximation of its actual hardness. And then we could use that to help us identify it on our earth science reference table. Looking at the most hardness scale once again, just looking at different minerals and where they lie. Emeralds or a lot of our precious stones have a higher hardness, which makes them more valuable. Just a few more. Okay, and getting to diamonds with a hardness of 10. Diamonds are, are something interesting. Uh, they're extremely old, but they form deep below the Earth's surface uh, where temperatures and pressures are high. And basically, they're carried up through Earth in volcanic eruptions. Uh, we can find them in what is called kimberlite formations, which is very similar to kind of what we see here. Oop, to what we see here on that one. We'll go more into this in class. Uh, this is looking at a diamond as it would be found in an actual mine. Notice it looks nothing like what we see here. The process of making a diamond going from here to there is extremely labor intensive. Um, and it takes uh, skilled craftsmen, which have been doing this for years and years, to be able to end up cutting diamonds and polishing diamonds to get them to look like this. Okay, we can get uh, diamonds in different colors and shapes, and we can look at the cut, clarity, and carrot in color with the four C's of diamonds to help us uh, judge them. We have garnet, which is New York State gem. We have hematite, New York State mineral. Okay, and that's this. Uh, the next, we're going to go on to cleavage and fracture. This is how the mineral breaks apart. And we'll save this and the rest of the different things that we can look at or characteristics we look at to identify minerals in our next screencast. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.